A model in machine learning is a mathematical representation of a system or process. It is built using a training dataset to learn the underlying patterns and relationships in the data. Once trained, the model can be used to make predictions or decisions on new unseen data. Earlier we saw in supervised learning, the model is trained on label data, where each data point is associated with a known output or label. The model learns to map the input features to the corresponding labels. In the housing price example, the model learns to predict the selling price of a house based on its features such as square footage, number of bedrooms and location. In unsupervised learning, the model is trained on unlabeled data, where there are no predefined labels associated with the data point. For example, in the music streaming example, the model learns to group similar songs together based on their features such as tempo, rhythm and instrumentation without being told what genre each song belongs to. But training your machine learning model with data that you have is not enough. You also have to evaluate it to understand if it needs to be improved or if it is going to perform well in the real world or not. Model evaluation establishes the fundamental principles and metrics by which machine learning models are judged. So in this video, we'll learn about the evaluation metrics, what they mean and in which cases to use them. So let's first take a look into the evaluation metrics that we use for classification tasks and the most popular one is accuracy. Accuracy is basically how many of the instances that you got right divided by the total number of instances that you have. When dealing with the classification problems, we are attempting to predict a binary outcome. Is it spam or not? Now, while accuracy seems straightforward, it can be misleading in binary classification problems such as medical diagnosis. A high accuracy doesn't always tell the whole story. Imagine a model with 99% accuracy in predicting credit card fraud. Sounds great, right? But what if the 1% of error means missing thousands of fraudulent transactions? Or consider a cancer screening test with 98% accuracy. That remaining 2% could be life-threatening misdiagnosis. That is why we have to break down the accuracy formula even further. TP or true positives here occur when your system predicts that an observation belongs to a class and it actually does belong to that class. For example, your model correctly flag an email as spam. True negatives or TN occur when your system predicts that an observation does not belong to a class and it does not belong to that class. For example, your model correctly identify a legitimate email as not spam. False positives occur when you predict an observation belongs to a class when in reality it does not. For example, your model accidentally mark a legitimate email as spam. This is also called as type 1 error. And finally, false negatives or FN occur when your model predicts an observation that does not belong to a class when in fact it does. For example, your model misses a spam email and let it into the inbox. This is also called as type 2 error. Now, even though accuracy is simple and very popular at the same time, it might not be always the best thing for you to use because accuracy simplifies things a little bit too much. And that's why you might need to look into things that are a little bit more detailed, like precision and recall. Precision and recall are classification metrics which are mainly defined on true positives, true negatives, false positives and false negatives. This diagram here visually represents the concepts of true false and positive negatives, as well as precisions and recall, which are key metrics in evaluating the performance of a binary classification model. That is a model that predicts one of the two possible outcomes. Here, the left greenish circle represents the relevant elements, things that the model should ideally identify as positive. For example, spam emails or fraudulent transactions. The reddish right circle represents the selected elements that is the items that model actually predicts as positive. So precision is the fraction of the selected elements that are actually relevant. In other words, out of all the things that the model said were positive, how many were actually right? And recall is the fraction of relevant elements that were correctly selected. In other words, out of all the things that were actually positive, how many did the model find? In mathematical representation, Precision is TP by TP plus FP or TP by predicted results. Similarly, recall is TP by TP plus FN or TP by actual results. Precision and recall are often a trade-off. You might be able to increase one, but it often comes at the cost of decreasing the other. The ideal model would have high precision and high recall, 
meaning it correctly identifies most of the relevant items without making too many false alarms understanding this precision recall trade off is crucial but it raises a question how can we visualize and quantify this balancing act confusion metrics is an essential tool that provides a clear snapshot of your model's performance the confusion matrix breaks down the results into four quadrants we discussed earlier tp tn fp and fn by examining these values we gain deeper understanding of where our model excels and where it struggles allowing us to strategically adjust its parameters or even choose a different algorithm altogether for binary classification it's a 2 by 2 table with two rows and two columns rows typically show the actual classes and columns show the predicted classes so let's say we have an email spam classification model it is a binary classification model the two possible classes are spam or not spam so let's say after training the model we generated predictions for 1000 emails in the validation data we already know the actual labels and can evaluate the quality of the model's prediction here is how the resulting matrix can look tp is the top left green corner of the matrix it shows the number of correctly identified positive cases these are the cases where the actual label is positive and the model correctly predicted it as positive in spam detection this is the number of correctly predicted spam emails tn is the bottom right green corner of the matrix it shows the number of correctly identified cases these are the cases where the actual label is negative and the model correctly predicted it as negative in spam detection this is the number of correctly predicted non spam emails fp shows the number of incorrectly predicted positive cases these are the cases where the actual label is negative but the model predicted it as positive to put it simply these are false alarms they are also known as type 1 errors so in spam detection this is the number of emails incorrectly labeled as spam and finally fn shows the number of incorrectly predicted negative cases to put it simply these are the missed cases these are also known as type 2 errors in spam detection this is the number of missed spam emails that made their way into your primary inbox using this matrix you can also calculate precisions by dividing the correctly identified positive cases by the total number of positive predictions made by the model in our example the precision is 0.86 so when predicting spam the model was correct in 86% of cases you can also calculate the recall by dividing the number of true positives by total number of positive cases in our example above the recall is 0.67 meaning the model correctly found 67% of spam emails the other 33% made their way into the inbox unlabeled okay so we have covered the basics of how to measure if our machine learning model is doing a good job but there is more to it and we'll get back to that later for now let's just dive into the exciting world of machine learning algorithms and see how they work their magic